Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Hey, hello, hello. Hey, G Walio, how are you going? Just finishing up a quick setup here. Sound is good. Sound is good. Video is good. Great. Um, I got an email from uh, one of you guys. I can. Um, I think. What's um, what's your name? Sorry, I just blanked out. I cannot remember the name, but. Uh, um, he was saying that the chat is a little bit fuzzy in the recordings in YouTube, so I don't know if I can increase the size or if you guys uh, can see the chat properly. Not sure. All right. Hey, Slipper. How are you guys doing today? Um, all right, so today um, I need to kind of like leave right in right at 12. So I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster. Uh, also because last time, this is what we did last time, just the, the blocking I have live booleans off. So we did the blocking of these and we did a quick walkthrough of the serial measure options using this dial. So this is what we end up with. So these are these were originally three objects, I think, uh, if I remember, and and we just changed this into this more polished piece for the dials. So today, the idea is, let me just revert all that. The idea is to work on the on some more complex areas around the the main body and on each side of this of this artifact, this sci-fi artifact. Um, I'm using the Jackal. 1300 as a reference I'll just show you in a second so I'm using all of these radius these these devices as reference I'm not copying it exactly a hundred percent I'm just you know trying to to select the, the areas and the things that um, I think they're they're looking good and we can potentially turn it into something interesting and and work on that but the idea is just to show you a bit of the workflow on hard surface Although I'm not a, a hard surface guy <laughs> by any means, uh, but I I found like some of the workflows, especially with the I mean with booleans and with the new Zero Mesh 3, to be particularly useful for this, um, and also to show that m me not being necessarily a hard surface guy, just to show that it is quite easily to to get into it uh, with these tools. And yeah, so the idea is going to work on the body a little bit and. Hopefully we'll have time to do a bit more of uh, Siri Mesha, uh, and I walk you through through the pro through the process of that. Um, do you know about for Fusion 360? I'm using it in my main tool for hard surface, but I always look into Siri. No, I think I'm not familiar with F Fusion 360. Is that a standalone application? Entirely, entirely sure what that is yeah no I haven't I haven't heard oh uh, you know what yes fusion 360 that's from Autodesk and that used to be called something else beforehand I think I, I it had a different name before and I n knew about that one um, I'm not sure if it's the same though all right so just go ahead and get started and if you guys have any questions as we as we go, uh, please feel free to leave them in the chat and, and or any comment, whatever you wanna ask around. And if I can or if I have the answer, I'm happy to to share it with you as well. Alrighty, so I think we have finished kind of like with this part. Uh, let me just bring in one more thing. My my good and trusted Epic Pen. There we go. And this is the one that I used to paint on the screen. Uh, so basically this one, I would just consider this area done. There's a couple of things that I need to add, uh, which are like the, 
tiny little sockets for the bolts in this area but that could be like at the the last pass with just you know minor details and that could be just bullions before before we turn this into a, a remesh so I'm going to concentrate on the big area uh, so I think I need to work on let's say like there's like a bar like a handle here oh, this is a horrible color for contrast let's just use black so it's gonna be a, a bar here let's do that one um, and then we can use booleans to create a hole here and then just duplicate this like so and then just work on the sliders here basically basically this is that uh, this have these things that I'm highlighting are going to be the ones that we're gonna be working on really quickly um, they're very simple shapes so it shouldn't take too long so let's go ahead and work on that um, what I am what I want to do is since I have everything organized nicely in here I'm gonna hide the front panel the dials and I have an extra one oh, the one that I have selected and I'm gonna go into the body and we can concentrate on just the body so the first one that I probably want to do I'm gonna start from the top to bottom I'm gonna open up the the folder and I'm gonna append I'm gonna append a a cylinder there we go Gizmo 3D to just rotate it in place scale it down move it forward and just position this again I'm gonna try to move a little bit faster uh, compared to what I did last last week which was more showing the the workflow um, so if you wanna you know double check that first feel free to do so this one is going to be a little bit faster uh, I'm gonna go into solo mode turn on polyframe and I'm gonna select half of this actually just mask it should be enough so I'm gonna mask half of this and using the gizmo again just holding control to extrude these on mask areas I'm just gonna push it down and this is the one that basically determines the the hole for those little dials or um, I wouldn't know what they are really just yeah dials um, there's something weird going on here let me just don't do that and I'm gonna turn off perspective just to sorry not polyframe perspective just to make sure that I grab the the right amount of faces all right, it seems to be working now. Control, click and drag. There we go. And I think this, for the most part, is good for the shape. All right, let's control, click and drag to extrude that. And what I want to do is create another one that we're going to use to um, boolean out or extract or subtract this area in the center. Uh, but let's position this one first, and I'm going to bring it into the body as well get out of solo mode and with the gizmo 3d we can center the gizmo and push this in I have a feeling that this is not this is not rotated properly I just reset the rotation and do that again holding shift perspective is off okay so everything seems to be working now there we go So this one is going to be kind of like the there is like a a nice outline for these dials. So this is just the outline. Uh, we're going to use booleans to to subtract the the inner side. So I'm going to concentrate on just these bits first, right? And before I duplicate it, I want to create that extra that extra part. So we can just simply duplicate this this object and we can push it forward a bit and then scale it down so this is basically going to determine the the thickness the one that we created earlier or before and one thing I want to do is make sure that it's a kind of like a consistent a consistent uh, thickness all around so we could have also used the snapshot 3d to create that outline but I think this one is just faster because we already have it here Alright, 
So now with that one in place, we can go ahead and maybe scale it in the y-axis. This is going to be the subtraction, and we can enable booleans and turn this one into a subtraction mesh. There we go. So this is kind of like the the hole for this part. All right, I think that is looking good. I'm going to turn off booleans. I just wanted to turn it on temporarily to see the how how deep this is or this um this button here. And now what I want to do is set this back to the normal union and I'm going to merge these two together. Uh, before I do that actually, I'm going to assign a new polygroup just to make sure that these two have different polygroups. As you can see, the yellow one and the pink one. And the reason I want to merge them together is because it's going to be easier to just duplicate them um, at once. So I'm going to merge down. Okay. So now these two live in the same subtool, although they're still separate meshes, essentially. Uh, but now we can go ahead and bring in the Gizmo 3D, hold Control to duplicate. And with this one, I'm still holding Control. I'm just setting up kind of like the distance between these two. And then I'm going to release control and then keep dragging and see we're just going to duplicate this, um, maintaining this, um, these spaces. So when I control, there we go. And now that they're in place, uh, maybe I just want to make, I want to make sure that these are centered. So let's bring in the Gizmo 3D and center everything and just to center it to the to the entire kind of like entire world um, we can set the the house icon we just need to reposition this a bit all right but that makes sure that with that action we make sure that these two sides are essentially the same or the same distance all right I'm gonna do something like that and turn on the front panel just to see where we are with this. All right, I think the, the proportions are looking good. And because we have this exactly the same, these are exactly the same duplicates, but they have consistent um, polygroups, we can just split by polygroup or split by groups. So that's the way how we, that's how we can separate this thing. So let's go to split and group split, say okay. And as you can see, now we have the first group that we created and the second one. So the second one is going to be the subtraction. So we can set it to subtraction and check with live booleans how everything's looking. All right, so pretty easy. Um, nothing too, too complex. Having, having the live booleans, um, I don't know if it's something to do with the, with the internet or what it is, but for some reason, there is some, some issue with ZBrush and the streaming. Um, this doesn't happen when I'm just working normally, but when I'm streaming, if I have live booleans on, it just tends to be very, very sluggish. I'm not sure why that is. So I'm going to turn it off temporarily while I set up the rest and before we create anything else. Right, so for the details or for the, um, the actual dials, we're going to create that separately. I'm just going to go ahead and create all the boolean meshes. So let's, um, let's append a cube bring that into the folder and I'm going to select that cube, turn it into a Q cube or a quick cube, bring that forward and let's set this up. I'm going to turn on the front panel as well just to have an indication of where these, these new details are going to be sitting and just playing with the scale, just looking at the references. Again, I'm not copying it a hundred percent, but I do want to keep certain elements that I think they look cool, like this one here. And this one is pretty similar to the one on the side, so I'm just going to duplicate those. I'm going to do one and then I'll do the other one. Right, I'm going to go into solo mode, because uh, this one is going to be really easy if we just use uh, the C model. So I have a macro here. I, I have already explained what it does, but it just gives me the, the C model and it turns on polyframe and reduces my, my brush size. It's just a very simple um, very simple macro that I created. So I'm going to right click on the on the edge, select bevel, <laughs> and click and drag to 
create this and I'm going to do the same thing here on the side. And then we can just fine tune this really quickly, holding control, bringing the gizmo, kind of like masking only the edges and just push this like so. And the same thing for the one in the middle. All right. So the only reason I did this is because we can use a single element to do the Boolean and we don't have to use more than one. Um, and I just want to create like a like a paneling effect when we extrude. So let's hold control, sorry, let's hold Alt to tag this polygon, right click, make sure that Q mesh is selected, and then we can extrude this like so. And this is the one that is gonna actually determine the depth of this um of this square or this um rectangle. And probably let's go ahead and hold control W to assign a single polygroup and then we can play with the um, with the dynamics of division which for you guys should be on the uh, right below the divide button in the geometry palette but I just have it here so this is the type of thing that we can do with this dynamics of division um, so with that on I'm gonna right click and create another well first I'm gonna create an insert uh, sorry an insert 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 poly loops and click hang on this is I'm still beveling what's going on insert there we go right click and I'm gonna make sure that I have multiple edge loops selected the difference between these two obviously is that you with one you add a single one um, the other one will add multiple but the the multiple one it's good because it will just put it right in between the the two poly loops that you the the two edge loops that you're creating. So if I have single one selected, I and I right click, it's not is not um, exact the the middle point. Like it just allows you to move it randomly. Whereas if you select multiple, and if you click once, it will put it just right in the middle, right? So that is what I want. And then we can take this and and split it right so we can right click bevel that hold control here to mask this area invert the selection or the mask and then scale this up like that just a bit we can turn off dynamic so we know we're replacing this and I'm gonna repeat the same exactly the same process here just click right click make sure that I have insert click once as you will remember my previous action and then let's bevel that as well click there we go. Mask this, these loops, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, and then something like that should be okay. Let's clear that mask. And now we can turn on, I just want to concentrate on this area at the back. This, this, you won't even see this because again, this is going to be a subtraction mesh. So I'm, I'm modeling, I'm modeling the volume that I want to um, extrude, sorry, not extrude, um, remove from the, from the, the main panel. All right, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and right click here on the edge, create another insert one. I just want to sharpen, oops, change to single. And I just want to sharpen this here, this border. All right, so I kind of like the, the, soft, the soft line of this area, but if you want, you can just, you know, add another one, maybe something like that. That is not too bad actually. And we can, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Uh, I'm just gonna sharpen the one, this side of the of this polygon a bit more. There we go. And finally, let's go ahead and go back to our move brush. And I have this, um, this particular um, matcap that I'm using is, is something that I, that I put together for a few reasons, is is very specular, but it's also it has um, cavity transitions, so you can see the borders a little bit better, and it's just overall a good mat matcap to work with these these type of objects. But anything with a high specular should be should be good. Um, so what I'll do is increase the grid, and that is going to sharpen everything. Set let's set it to one, and see what that gives us. And then we can increase the the coverage or decrease it and play with the constant. Let's 
So that is not too bad. I'm going to turn off grid again. I'm just playing with the, the smooth subdivision. So I'm just going to increase the, the smooth. And I think that is actually better. All right, so this is a relatively heavy object. Um, so when we do the booleans, or when we actually produce the mesh, it's going to be a bit heavy in this area. But we'll see how we go. All right, so now that I have this, let's bring back everything else bring in the gizmo and push this in and we can go ahead and turn this as a subtraction mesh turn on booleans and this is what i was sort of going for All right so it's much more easier it's, i think it's easier to just do a an object that will that will create the, the whole boolean operation rather than have multiple ones doing the same thing and in this case that is really or relatively easy so i'm going to hold control click and drag and this is kind of like the additional one, the additional area um, of this. So let me just clear that mask. Um, I will put this one here. Hopefully you can see that in the recording. Yep, it's not being called by anything. And I'll just bring the the reference so you can see which one I'm working on. So I'm I'm kind of creating these things right here. Right, um, and they're pretty similar. These two, uh, maybe we can play with the the width of this one just to reduce it. I don't know, just to make it something a little bit different. And we also did these ones. Um, now let's go ahead and work on these ones. It's going to be pretty similar. Um, same process. We're going to create something like this that also has the kind of this hole, and then we're going to duplicate it and then create another one for this area another one from this area and this area um, probably this one as well we can do it as well which is is going to be different it's not going to be a, a subtraction it's going to be an addition but once we have this we can move on to other parts like you know like the borders basically or the sides of this of this reference which you know this type of things the dials here and this speaker and then uh, hopefully we have time we'll just work on the the actual details and the, and the dials. Okay, cool. Let me just see the chat if you guys have any questions or so, any comments so far. Good. Fusion is much better than 123D. It's a full solid modeling package, just generative and parametric producing design. Good to know. Saludos desde México. Hola, Ruth. Ruth Vic. Hola, Khalil. Is it a destructive workflow or I have opportunity to tweak Boolean objects? Um, what I'm doing right now is uh, kind of like a non-destructive because I keep, I mean, it is destructive in a way that once you create the Booleans, that's it. But it's non-destructive because I keep all the originals. So if I want to tweak something, I just go back to the original, move things in place. So if I'm not happy with this, I can just bring in the gizmo, move it around, and that is non-destructive, uh, and then produce the next boolean. But it is destructive once you produce the boolean. So far, this is just a preview. So if I turn off live boolean, I go back to this, right? So it's not, it's not destructive in that sense. But if you create the booleans, which is what we're going to do later on, it will, it will be a solid mesh that it's, it doesn't have undo history or anything. So uh, it is destructive. In that in that way, but if you keep, I mean, with the folders, these are such a light series of polygons. Like right now, I have in these two boxes, I only have 296 points, so it is it is very light. Uh, so you can potentially just keep all the originals in folders and and then produce different booleans every time. I don't know if that if that answers your question. Um, let me just I'm gonna zoom in into my references here I don't know if you can see it from the in the recording but I have the monitor here um, and I have this the the reference there it's not very very clear the only reason I don't put them in the actual UI or using a spotlight for that is because um, I, I have a this kind of like limited space to work with and yeah it's just easier all right. So for the for the other panel or for the other area, I'm just going to bring in another 
another cube. I'm going to do this a little bit faster because I already explained parts of this process. First, I'm just going to block in the shape or the main shape using the gizmo. Position this in place. Something like that. Then go into solo mode. Uh, I need to turn this into a Q cube first. <laughs> Q cube. Let's repeat that really quickly. Alright, go into solo mode and I'm going to bring in the gizmo. Not the gizmo, sorry, the C modeler. And I'll create that, that little gap by right clicking on the middle one, bevel, hold control and mask these edges, invert, bring in the gizmo, scale that up. Let's just set up set up the, the height of this um of the little slide or the hole for the slide, the little slider panel. Maybe something like that. Clear the mask, bevel this now, and this is gonna be the actual width of it. Alright, so that seems to be okay. Maybe the entire thing could be a bit thinner. And therefore this could be also a bit thinner. There we go. So that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and make sure the we have the cumulus selected. Hold all to tag this polygon, extrude that in, and this one is gonna be a bit deeper. Uh, but other than that, we can simply let's turn on dynamic. It's gonna be quite quite smooth, but at least we can tell where are the areas that we can add edge loops. Let's right click on the edge and click on insert. Whoops, insert. Uh, I'm going to turn on dynam dynamic. Sometimes it's just harder to see where you're placing it. So dynamic off. Click and drag to create one here. And maybe another one closer to this area. There we go. And then we can just refine the borders at the top. Just adding edge loops. Okay, and we can probably do the same thing here at the top of this. And I kind of like the, the roundness of this. I mean, it's not the same as the reference, but I like I like having a little bit of roundness in this in this area. So that is looking good. Um, I'm gonna hold Control W to assign a single polygroup. Again, this is thinking ahead. Once I do the boolean and the and the series measure, I want to have a single group or a single polygroup for this whole thing. Uh, maybe a different one for the one inside, but we'll do that. Uh, let's, do it, let's do it now. Just hide in that, assign a polygroup. There we go. All right, and do the same thing with the smooth divider. Just increase the subdivision, the smoothness. That is looking good. And turn off polyframe just to double check. Um, not entirely sure about this, this beveling. I'm going to add another one right in the middle. So right click, insert, multi edge loop tool. Okay, that is a little bit better. Yep, what I think I might do is just add a couple more, or actually let's just right click here, or click and drag to create these edge loops. And that is just going to help um, maintain kind of like this this center piece a bit straight so that's looking a little bit better great um now let's go get out of solo mode use the gizmo 3d to just position this in place turn on booleans ah actually yep it is let's put it inside the folder set it as a subtraction mesh live booleans and there we go so I'm going to set up the, the distance, great, turn off live booleans, uh, and the only reason I'm doing that again is because I found that when I'm streaming it's, it's a bit hard to uh, to move around with the live booleans on, not entirely sure what that is. I'm going to hold control, 
click and drag this is the same thing I did for the for the holes at the top and just create that little gap control we can drag so now we have the these two dials or the or the the space for the sliders all within the same sub tool so I can just go ahead and light boolean that and this is how the thing is looking Let's go ahead and do a quick save. And we can go ahead and repeat the same action uh, for the rest. So for the other two, uh, let's just do another one. I'm going to repeat the same process. So this is a repetitive action again, but I'll do it quickly. So cube. Select the cube, Q cube, and then use the gizmo. We're gonna position this in place. Kind of like blocking out the main shapes first. Um, I'm gonna create the one here at the bottom. This is another another switch from this board. Right, go into solo mode. So far, I haven't done anything different. Uh, the only thing that we can try with this one is just play around maybe with the with the shape here at the at the back. So instead of like beveling this and splitting these edge loops of this yeah these edge loops in two, we can just tag this polygroup with hold uh, holding Alt, right click, and we can insert this region, the entire region, right, and something like that. I'm gonna, without letting go of the click, I'm gonna click Alt a few times just to assign different polygroups or different colors, so it's easy to see. And I'm gonna tag this one, right click, select Q Mesh, and extrude this as well. All right, this one is also gonna be uh, a bit deep. And then we can simply turn on Dynamic and see, see it's a little bit rounder um, on the edges. So the, the edge here, with what I did, and the reason why I did that is because now, whoops, <laughs> this the roundness of this edge is gonna be it's gonna be a bit proportional and similar to this one. Um, so that is kind of like what I try to try to do there. Um, let's go ahead and sharpen those transitions of this area here, and we can just select, right click, insert, uh, not insert, sorry, insert single edge loop, click and drag. So this is how we can sharpen this border. And because we use the the inset, we have a nice set of, or, or a poly loop around here. So we can just click and drag this as well from this area. Um, maybe another one here to sharpen the main edge here at the top. And let's just click and drag another one here. There we go. Uh, let's just sharpen this as well. This one with another poly loop or edge loop, sorry. And I think that is looking good. I like the, the roundness of this. Um, if we want to maybe make it a little bit sharper, we can, uh, because the distance, uh, let's see. So the distance between this point and this point is obviously less than the distance between this point and this point. Um, I, I kind of like the ones at the top, but we can probably take this one and split it into and that way we can, you know, shorten this, make this distance equal to this this distance. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that will make it a bit more consistent and, and more interesting, I think. So right click on the edge, let's click bevel, and I'm gonna bevel this. Right, so that is, that's kind of what I meant um, with what I just draw on top. Like this, the the proportion of this, um, of this side turning into this side is gonna be more more consistent in a way. So that is good. That is pretty good. All right, let's do, I'm gonna right click, insert, I'm just gonna sharpen this, although you won't probably see it, uh, but I just wanna make sure that when I do the Boolean, this is gonna be, like this line is gonna be straight. Right, so we can turn off polyframe, um, play around with the, with the smooth subdivision This one will probably have to smooth it quite a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna try Q grid instead, one Q grid. 
constant still is very faceted now so this is going to leave the q grid at zero and then just play with with dynamic so subdivision five this one is going to be pretty heavy but i think it works alrighty so let's get out of solo bring in the gizmo and this is the one that we need to to use to kind of like set up the depth turn life bullions on oh this one needs to let's turn it off again this one needs to be inside our folder with the with the body and set it as a subtraction mesh turn on booleans live booleans and there we go so that is kind of what i think i'm happy with the with the roundness of this it's, it's kind of cool uh, so let's just reposition this a bit better maybe scale it down in a bit more all right so now what i can do is just duplicate this uh, this could be a separate object doesn't doesn't matter um, we can just duplicate that turn off booleans i'm going to set this as a subtraction mesh again but this time i'm going to move it forward hold shift to rotate with the perspective off and just looking at it from the front and this is going to be the same thing but a bit smaller so but similar shape really all I want to do is maybe turn off dynamic turn on polyframe go into solo mode I just want to make this entire thing um, just scale it down maybe a little bit so on the x-axis in this case or if I reset the gizmo on the y-axis that makes more sense all right um, something else that I can do is hold control just to select this actually let's hold spacebar to reposition the mask I'm just going to select these ones, these points, invert the mask, and make sure that I mask out or mask in all of these as well. All right, now bring in the gizmo, center it to the unmask areas, and just check. Yep, it's working fine. Uh, so, what I want to do is maybe from this angle, so holding Alt, you can reposition the gizmo, obviously. I'm just going to scale this down a bit. Maybe from this angle is easier. And also in the x-axis. Not x, sorry, in the y-axis. And that is just the main difference that I want to do. Um, now you notice that as I did that, this edge loop kind of like get a little bit wonky or gets squashed. So it's not a it's not a straight line anymore. It just has this this curvature. Uh, that is a really easy fix. Um, it doesn't really matter for this in this case, but if you want to keep things clean and I know how you guys like to, to work sometimes. Um, it is very easy. You can just mask this entire poly loop, invert the selection, bring in the gizmo, center it to the unmask area, and then just scale it in the relevant axis. All right, so I'm just going to repeat that on the other one so you can see. Hold control, click and drag to mask that, invert the masking, set the center um, with the location icon for the gizmo, and then just scale it into the x axis. Clear the mask, and there we go. Now, because I didn't change much of the topology, um, the dynamics of the vision is working still pretty good. So now we can turn this off, um, get out of solo mode, and the distance should be also consistent. So let's just turn, let's turn dynamic on again, and like booleans, and there we go. So this, this is kind of what um, I wanted to do earlier on. Um, there's one more that we have to do so let me just do that one at the bottom really quickly and then we can have a look at some some questions that you guys might have so I'm gonna use the booleans this one so this object that we're using to subtract the, the holes in the top I'm gonna just duplicate that move that one down and I found like this this simple action of just selecting the subtool and dragging in the new series 2019 it's like a, a very very small update but it's just the workflow is just improved like dramatically i just can click and drag to reorganize stuff and it's just amazing so i'm going to select this one i know that doesn't that that doesn't sound like much but i just found it to be really helpful for some reason um, i'm going to take these ones out hold control shift and select only this area i'm going to bring my palette Ugh. I don't have it with me, so 
let's just delete hidden all right center the gizmo here I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees holding shift so that it snaps to the to integer numbers move these like so and all I have to do let's go ahead and turn on polyframe mask one side invert that mask and then just scale this a bit more all right center that pivot and I want to scale this even more just make it smaller and yeah just let's let's just reposition this I want to maintain some kind of like pattern here maybe align it with this edge here at the bottom all right and this is going to be right here that looks good and let's turn on let's make it a subtraction mesh and let's turn on live booleans so we can see it all right uh, one thing I want to do maybe we'll do it before we do the boolean but I just want to make sure that these these cylinders and these ones as well um, they have they are have they have dynamic enable because I want them to be a bit rounder although it doesn't really matter in this case because these ones are a simple object and once we do the remesh uh, we should be able to smooth those those poly loops ideally uh, same thing with this but you know I just want to have them a bit smoother earlier on all right so now that I have this the only one that we have left to complete kind of like the the paneling or the subtraction of this front part is this mesh here at the top or not at the top but the in this area which is very similar to one of the ones that we have here so very similar to this one right here so I can go into the move brush hold alt and select this specific one which is the cylinder so I'm gonna duplicate that one and just drag this into my folder here right so this is not a subtraction mesh it's gonna be actually um, adding but it's good to have it from from here all right so this one is gonna be a bit a bit bigger and I think this one would look good at this point right there and again we can just play around with the positioning of this so it, need, it doesn't need to be sticking out that much but I kinda like it uh, maybe turning on live boolean just to double check maybe not so much there we go and this one also has uh, kind of like a paneling thing or like a, a glass so let me just double check um, this one I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it a bit different from these ones I wanna have an extra border so I'm gonna go into solo mode bring in the C modeler get closer here and I'm gonna hold the alt key just to tag all of these polygons oops alt to tag get a bit closer be careful when you do this action of tagging polygons sometimes you might tag things from the other side if you just draw or like click and draw and drag to to select them and I'm gonna hold right click not hold right click select Q mesh um, and I'm gonna push this in a bit so this is kind of like creating the thickness where the glass might sit kind of like there maybe it's too thick let's just do it again something more subtle there we go and then using this um, this polyframe I'm gonna right click click on inset make sure I have the entire region selected and right click as well make sure that the target is set to polygroup also it takes into account the entire polygroup not just a single uh, squad and I'm gonna do this type of thing just a couple of times to generate a couple of the the, the polygroups in this area and then we can right click here for example do bevel and just bevel this tiny bit I don't want too much I want to maintain this like a sharp edge and there we go and finally we can also let's just turn off polyframe bring back everything together so <clears throat> that's looking good 
I just want to take one of these squares from this other uh, this other area, duplicate it, and again just drag and put that in in here into this folder, and turn that as a subtraction mesh, bringing Gizmo 3D. And I'm just doing this a little bit faster because I already showed this. This is kind of like the same thing. Um, I'm not doing any new workflows. All right, and this is going to be the the screen kind of where you can see um, where you can see this. Uh, this one is going to be actually I'm going to make it a bit thicker. Right? And I probably have to do the same thing for the ones in the middle because I just realized um, that these dials actually are kind of like cylinders inside that move and show the, the different radio station or whatever it is. So let's, um, let's double check with light bullions. Yep, that's not too bad. Actually, a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, so that is looking good. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing for these for these areas. Um, so let's turn off live booleans, and I'm gonna do a quick save. Check the chat. I haven't checked that today. Um, how do you retopologize something like that? I like the boolean stuff, but I'm afraid that I have to rebuild the whole thing with the good topology. Um, yeah, so that is the the whole point of this of this stream. I'm gonna show you um, how to do that, and we've we've done that already in the previous in the previous um, stream. So the one that led up to this point, uh, we did the retopologies using the Siri Mesh R3 with one of the dials. So that is just a simple version, and then I'm gonna try to do it with a more complex shape. That that's what I'm going to create with these booleans. Um, ¿Llegas a usar la herramienta de Chris para hard surface o solo en ocasiones? So, Rudvik is asking if I if I use the crease or the tools for creasing in the hard surface or or sometimes uh, or sometimes I don't. Um, I I like the creasing tools for certain things, but the the thing with the creasing is that it is very very sharp um, and yeah, like nothing in real life is as sharp as what the crease will give you. There's not a way to control how much creasing, so or, or that I know of. Uh, so I prefer not to use creasing. I just prefer to add the, the loops myself, so that way I have a tiny bit of beveling, and that creates a more realistic effect, I think. Uh, but sometimes beveling is really good. Like for example, if you create a dial uh, or an insert mesh, you can set the the border of the dial in this case at the bottom to be. Uh, to be an, a crease, so when you subdivide it, it doesn't shrink everything together. So it is definitely very really good. It's not something that I, I use often. All right, so let's let's go to the bottom one. So this front panel here. So the front panel, I want to go into live booleans just to make sure that I select the right one. Yeah, so I'm gonna select this one, and I'm gonna do kind of like what I did with this one really quickly. So going to solo, C modeler, exactly the same thing, holding Alt. So I'm gonna repeat this process here and in the next one, just so you know. And I'm gonna do it really quickly because I already explained kind of what I'm doing here. And also, just so you know as well, um, that you could actually work really fast with the with the C modeler once you get the hang of the tools. So there we go, that's all I wanted to do. Now let's select the uh, hang on live booleans. We have to fix this part. Yep, yeah, let's do this one as well. And all I'm doing here is just adding a, a another level of complexity. So that's going to give us a a more complex loop once we do the the retopology. So hopefully, hopefully it's going to work. We're just going to try to push the limits of the oh, what's the name of the Siri Mesha, really. Cool. All right. So now that we have that. Let's go ahead and tweak the this 
the screens or these panels. Uh, probably it's better to do it within the live booleans. So I'm going to select this one, bring in the Gizmo 3D, push it in, scale it in the X axis, sorry, the Y axis in this case. Like that, and just make it more, um, you know, deep into this this whole thing, just so we can create the, the screens later on. Okay, don't crash, don't crash. Close. I don't know what's going on. All right. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, it's something to do with bo with booleans and and streaming or using. Uh, maybe I have to just uh, prioritize the ZBrush task on my processor. I'm not sure what that is. All right. Uh, the other one, so this bit, before I go into live booleans, I'm going to do it kind of like blind without looking. I'm going to scale it like that, and then just a bit down. And then we can just go to live booleans, solo, and just scale this down a bit. Push that in just to make it a bit deeper. Turn off live booleans. Uh, there we go. Phew, all right. So I think that is it. That is all we have to do to set up this um, this front part. Let's go ahead and save. We'll do a quick save. So now we can move on to to the side panels. I think that is pretty much it. Um, before we actually do the dials and and other details that make that's gonna make this look a little bit more interesting. Um, but if you if you really think about it, if you if you simplified all the forms. Um, what really makes it complex is all the texture and the and the details in the texture, um, plus obviously the dials, which we we'll, hopefully we'll have time to do today. Hey, Sasi Sasei Naru Kitsumo, how you doing, man? Um, cool. Um, can you show your tablet on camera? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Just um, it's. It's impossible to lift. It's really, really heavy. Um, but it's the you can Google it. Is the Cintiq 24 Touch, um, and I have the the Ergo stand, so I can just move this up and down. But it's really hard to yeah, it's really hard to lift it to to show you. Um, cool. So no no questions so far. Pretty pretty simple workflow. Um, I think. I think we're ready to move on, so let me just uh, set my my references. I'll bring them here, and I'm just going to show you what we're going to try to do. So now the idea that we have completed, like we have done this pretty much. Oh, we have to do this, but that's really quickly. Uh, that's not a big deal. Uh, we can do that really, really fast. Uh, but now we're going to concentrate on creating the kind of like the holes for this area and this one right here and I think there's one on the other side as well so let's just do that because that's going to be boolean as well boolean oh come on no, doesn't matter well you know what I mean so these areas are going to be booleans and this is going to be just an added mesh to them to the whole thing so let's just go ahead and do that really quickly because it's not, you know, it's not a complex uh, process. Just more of the same. So first, I'm going to create that that um, that tube, and I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm just going to make it the easy way to so, to show you another process or another workflow for these type of shapes. So that is within. Let's just collapse that. That is within the body. Uh, so I want to make sure I put that at the bottom, although it's not going to be intersecting by any of the booleans, but I just want to make sure that it's at the bottom so that it doesn't get booleaned or nothing gets subtracted. So what I'm going to do is append a ring 3D, right? And with that ring 3D, we can just put it here at the bottom, like I said, select that, go into solo mode. Uh, with the ring 3D, what I want to do is scale it to create like the, the tube. So I'm going to make I'm going to take advantage of the curvature already that this this um, ring 3D has. So I'm going to 
cut it here and then I'm gonna make sure I select from this area and extrude this way and this way so that way we can end up with this nice consistent curvature here in one side like that and this one obviously on the other side and this is gonna be extruded so we're gonna end up with something like that so from this ring 3d we just create that kind of handle really quickly that is the idea now let's see in practice if it if it works if it works so hold control shift click and drag I'm gonna hide let's, um, let's hide that one as well there we go and I'm gonna delete hidden so now we, we only have these bits and let's go ahead and hold control right and I just um, mask half of this bring in the gizmo hold control to extrude and drag this like so oops I think hang on a second I need to mask only these ones there we go so now we're gonna determine kind of like the the length of this handle we probably should be doing this while we see <laughs> the the actual um, you know the, the entire thing the entire device so let's just position that, that right in the middle scale this down and this one is going to be sitting right there oh that is not too bad that's actually quite good right um, another cool trick well not a trick but another way that you can control this um, is like if you're not happy with the thickness you can control this from the initialize settings when you create when you select the ring 3d you go to the initialize settings and you can create how much uh, loops you have and how much thickness and all that but once you create this this mesh already uh, it's very easy if you just go to the deformation palette because it is for the most part a consistent shape and uniform and there's no crevices or anything we can go to inflate and that is essentially is going to push or pull in the the polygons from the normal so we can just decrease the um, the radius of this really easy from here from inflate or just increase it so I'm just gonna make it a bit thinner not, not such a feature piece cool so that is it let's go ahead and move that in um, no actually this has kind of like a like an area here that we can play around with a bit more so let's go to solo make sure the C model is selected and what I want to do is this is right in the middle uh, because we center with the gizmo so I'm going to turn on symmetry and we can work on both sides I'm going to right click the edge and I'm going to where is it I'm going to close hole and I'm going to make sure it is a convex hole so I'm going to click here and that series is going to give me this type of thing we can uh, without letting go of the kick, click we can click and drag up to add more of these loops or left and right to in theory Add, um, add a little bit of um, curvature but I just want to leave it like that all right um, I want a single polygroup in this case so I can hold control and shift to select this invert control W to assign a single polygroup that should have done it to the other side yep all good and now we can use this polygroup target that single polygroup by selecting polygroup all and Q mesh and we can just extrude this like that and this is going to be this is going to be like the area with the with this tube or this handle kind of fits in um, then we can just hold right click sorry not hold right click on this polygroup and I'm going to scale that so scale oops right click uh, we need to set the, the the modifier of the target for this scaling right now it's just scaling it from the center I think from the mesh center so we need to scale it with local symmetry polygon center let's try polygon center I think that is the one nope oh sorry it is it should be the one we just need to select polygroup also that it takes into account the entire polygroup all right that's it cool uh, perspective is on I have a feeling that this for some reason is not straight I don't know why <laughs> Let's just double check. Maybe it is the 
the NT alias of the polygroups, but let's just um, mask that area, center that pivot, and just scale it down. It wasn't for some reason, but that that is good. So that's it. Um, you know what? We can just scale in this entire thing a bit more. So because this is a single polygroup, we can right click Q mesh polygroup all, and then we can extrude this like that. That's kind of cool. And we can just bevel this because it has a, a bit of a curvature is not perfectly straight here, but I like it. Uh, we can correct that if we wanted to, but I think just adding a bit of bevel here will make it work really nice. Actually, we can repeat that action a couple times here. There we go. Um, oops, I did a bevel here. I didn't want it to. Why is it doing it that way? Oof. There's a problem here. Let's just revert that. Hmm, something is going on. Oh, you know what it is? It's just snapping to this um, to this area. That's fine. Uh, let's do it in a simpler simpler way. I'm just gonna right click to insert a uh, edge loop, drag it here, and then we can just mask out this one, invert, bring in the gizmo to this area, and then just scale it up. That is essentially the same thing, it's just a bit faster. Let's make sure that this is flat. Yeah, I think it's just the, the anti-alias of the thing that is making me nervous. Oh, come on. <laughs> Alright, that's not good. Let's just undo all that. I thought it was going to be easier. Of course. Um, Alright, so another way that we can do this is just right click on this um, edge, scale, the entire edge loop, the edge loop complete, and that is it. So that should give us what we need. Let's double check the other side. Whew, finally, this should this was meant to be like a simple process, but took a while. There we go. Bevel this area here. Oh, it's masked. Let's clear the mask. Clear the mask again, bevel this area here. Um, we can do the same thing from this a bit. And I just want to make sure that this border is be very is gonna be very sharp. So I'm gonna right click, insert, and I'm gonna insert one there. So this is gonna be very, very sharp. Well not very sharp, but you know what I mean. And alright, there we go. So the only thing this is not gonna be a I mean, we don't have to remesh this one because it's already a pretty clean geometry. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So I don't, ha I don't have to play with the, the polygroups or anything like that. Turn off symmetry in center this. And then we can bring in, let's get out of solo, turn off polyframe. And I think it's pretty good. Let's just leave it around there. Barely embedded into the entire thing. Cool. All right. So that's looking good. I don't I don't see much purpose on on this, but oh, like in terms of the design, but I'm sure it has some functionality. But let's just leave it there. All right, so let's do a quick save. Have a look at the chat. All good. Is there a way to connect to connect two objects that have the same number of edges without having to bridge one edge at the, at a time? Um, yeah, if you have exactly the same two holes, you can use bridge two holes instead of just bridge. So instead sorry, it's not in the it's not um it's not a bridge option, it's a close hole option. Um I can probably show you this really quickly. Let me just show you if I select cylinder, polymesh 3D and scale this up. Delete selected polygons. So uh, hopefully this is what you mean. I'm not not entirely sure. Ah, cool. So, but yeah, just so just so you know, I'll do it really quickly. So these two have exactly the same number of polygons. So if you right click, um, instead of bridging one by one, you can go to close and select. No, it's not close. 
hang on, bridge, bridge to holes. <laughs> yeah, it was within the bridge. So bridge to holes, um, click on that one. Just try to make sure that you select the one right opposite to that one to, to close it. And that, that should do the trick. Cool. Alrighty, so let's go back to this guy. Uh, and then we're ready to start with the, with the right panel. So I'm gonna collapse the body and we can probably let's go to the right panel. I'm gonna turn everything off. Oh, this is not, this is not, hang on. Oh, yeah. I was getting a little bit over the, all, all over the place. Uh, front panel, that's fine. I'm gonna turn off the right hand side and the front panel off. All right, so now we can work only on this, on this folder here. Cool. So I want to first do kind of like this, this shape, and we can do that really quickly as well with um, the snapshot 3D. So let's go to let's load the lightbox. This one, right? Um, so I need to create a, a custom alpha. So I'm just gonna take this one that I, I don't use often, scale it up. And I did this in the previous uh, in the previous session, but I'll just repeat it really quickly using the intensity slider. I'm just gonna turn this into black, so Zero is gonna interpret as transparent. So now I have like an empty canvas, and I can go to the circle. So I'm gonna use the circle, center that, snap it to the center of this entire uh, blank canvas of the image. Scale this up, something like that. And I'm going to click on this union icon, right? So that is just going to create uh, or drop this image and merge it with the with the empty one. Cool. So let's leave this one here. And then I'm going to select the square. Um, yeah, let's just use the square. Center that pivot again. And I'm just going to snap this to the center of this image. Rotate it holding shift to snap that. Um, yeah, 40, uh, 90 degrees or 40, 45 degrees, I think it was. And then scale this up. And we can just move it holding shift. And all I'm trying to do here is create that. Um, yeah, I'll show you in just a second. I think maybe something like that would be fine. Yeah, something like that. And I'm gonna hold union. So now we have this custom alpha. I'll show you what uh, the reason why I created this alpha in a second. Oh, for that, let me bring in the references again. So the reason I did that alpha is just to skip a step, and it's so easy to do it in the uh, snapshot 3D. So if you look at this this gap that I'm going to create with booleans, it also has this. It's kind of like, yeah. This type of shape, right? So with the with the alpha that I created, it's going to basically do this. So this is the alpha. If you look at it in perspective, right? So it's the circle and the and the rotated square. So it creates this alpha, and we can just create this entire shape to get rid of that part really easy. That is that is the thinking behind it. Um, these are just theories based on what I think it might work, but it might not. <laughs> so let's give it a go. All right. So let's select the the alpha that I created, and I'm gonna try to position these maybe aligned, align the um, the square or the, the the corners of this square with the with the edge here, just to make it easier. Uh, hang on, let's try that. If anything, we can just add a bit more of um. You know what? Let's do it before we continue, because I'm just thinking. So that we have more room to play and reposition this object, uh, it might be actually good if we just 
add a bit more. So let's just rotate this square again, center it here. And I'm just going to scale that up. Or before I scale it up, actually, we can use the extension, extend vertically, oh, in this case, horizontally, because we moved it around. And just want to make sure these are right in the in the border. So, whoops. Just trying to do this a little bit more careful. I think that might work. Union. There we go. So now we can do, again, repeat all that action that I was mentioning. Set that up there. And we can simply, right now we have the this subtool selected. So whatever we create based on the cam, on this uh, snapshot 3D is going to have the depth of the selected subtool. So let's go ahead and hold Alt and click on this snapshot 3D, the little camera and turn off lightbox and now we have this mesh that automatically zero set it up to be a subtraction and it has a nice rounded set of edges there and we can simply use this to oops center pivot and maybe we can turn on live booleans turn off polyframe and this is going to be kind of like the the gap that we're going to create. In. All right, so that looks all right. I mean, we have to tweak a few things in here. I think maybe just push it forward, actually. There we go. That's more, that's more like it. Hmm. All right, turn off live volumes before this breaks. Um, cool. So, what I need to make sure is let's go ahead and bring in the the front so front panel. Not the front, sorry, not the front panel. The the body. Ah, the front panel as well. So let's bring both. So this this circle or this shape that should be matching this area because it's kind of like the dial to affect this area right here. So I'm going to try to match this, center that right in there before I, you know, tweak anything else. And then I'm going to hold control, click and drag because they're essentially the same thing for this one right here. All right. So now to double check that this makes sense, let's turn on live booleans. And there we go. So this this kind of works. Maybe we can tweak this one a little bit here or push it up. But if we do that, then we have to push this one as well. Um, let's just push that that thing a bit up. So invert that center, push that up. So it, there is no intersection with this extra piece at the bottom. Uh, but then now we have to take all of these ones. So let's clear that up. Uh, we need to take that is in the front, no, that's in the body. Let's open that up. And these ones here at the top. So we have that one, that one, only these two. Oh, so that's going to be easier. So let's bring in the gizmo and click on this pizza icon, how Joseph likes to call it. Uh, the pizza icon is going to move everything that is mask or on mask or visible. So once you have your gizmo and this is enabled, you can hold control and shift and then just drag to select only the ones that you want to move. Um, right now, the ones with the with the lines are not going to move, just the ones that are, don't have the light. So I want to make sure that only I move these ones. So I, have, I can hold Control and Shift, click and drag here, and hold the Alt. And I'm just basically removing objects that I don't want to move. I want to make sure that's it. So only these ones. And I can push this up so that I have this kind of like in the center, just to match this. Cool, so let's 
clear that out and turn this back off. There we go. So let's do a quick save. I think this is working fine. Let's see it from the side. Yep, that's looking good. Turn live boolean on. There we go. So everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and do the, the speaker here. And let's see how are we with time. I think we have um, about 10. All right. So we have a few a few more minutes uh, to play around with this shape. Uh, the the one on the other side is not that complicated, so I can do that after, or it's the same. So I don't, I mean, I can show you, but it's going to be the same. I'm just thinking, looking at the reference here, um, thinking about what processes I can show you that I haven't shown you because the rest would be repetitive. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to show you the the process of creating that speaker really quickly, and then after that, we can have a look at if we have time to create a dial, one of the more complex dials. And after that, we can do the Siri mesha, or like try the, just create a, a Boolean object with the Siri mesha. Paul Livian, hey, how you going? How you going, Paul? I love your last alien character. Thank you so much. Um, not sure which one. The the one that I did here in the in the live stream or somewhere else. Hola Guillermo, saludos desde México. And Brian saying Brian life. I've been doing the same methods lately, creating music equipment. So cool to see another person doing. <laughs> yeah, um, I just find them to me. I just found them so interesting because I don't understand them. <laughs> That's why I like them because for me, like sound is is so bizarre. Um, it it's really hard for me to. I'm not a, um, a musician or like a music person. I mean, I like music, but for me, sound is so abstract because I cannot visualize it. And 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 that kind of like plays to that as well, like these consoles for mixing and, and all these things with the sound. I just don't understand any of that. So I found them fascinating. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that really quickly. And I think I've been using that really quickly <laughs> phrase too much today but um everything is so quick now that it is it is appropriate so really quickly let's do it let's do it again uh where is the where is the right panel here um cool let's go ahead and turn this off so we can work a bit more simple and for this panel here we can we can use a cylinder or we can duplicate some of the things that we've done maybe that is uh, a simpler approach let's take this one, duplicate it, and send it down to the left side. There we go. Uh, let's put it down here. And now we can just rotate this 90 degrees, or minus 90. And we can just reposition this, and this is going to be the hole for the speaker. So this is a speaker that goes kind of like in here. I'm just going to play around with the size, try to fit it a bit better. Maybe the, maybe a bit more, something like that. Or maybe less. I don't know. This is just a, this is kind of like a, an artistic decision at this point. Um, I'm not following necessarily the, the reference too much. So, um, I just want to place it first, and now that I have it in place, I need to tweak these these lines because these type of borders here, when we do the Siri mesha or the booleans, these areas are going to be a bit problematic. So um, I want to also follow kind of like the design where these lines stop here, or the rounded areas also stop here. So let's do that. Um, that is in here. All right. So what I'll what I want to do is go into transparent right so i can see a, a better idea what this looks like and i'm gonna hold control and shift and let's just reposition that holding spacebar uh, i just want to delete from here to to here no from here to here yeah i think so holding alt so i'm gonna hide those ones and 
control X for me. So I have a, a shortcut, just so you know, control X is delete hidden. I have that hotkey assigned to the delete hidden. So it's faster for me to work like that. Um, the other one is that these ones are gonna be slightly different. So I'm gonna hold control and shift, isolate those ones and I can just split hidden. So now these ones, if I bring the Gizmo 3D, um, I, can, I can play around with these ones a little bit more. Uh, the only thing, if, if I go into solo mode, is that these things have a bunch of poly loops here that if we scale this down, it's gonna not be proportional on the sides. So what I wanna do is right click on this. I have the C modular selector. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on the edge. It's gonna be easy if I press spacebar. And I'm gonna collapse, not close, collapse, crease, delete. Delete edge, edge loop complete. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is right in the center, but let's give it a go. I'm gonna turn on symmetry in the Y axis. Yep, so this is not clearly in the center. So what I'll do is center pivot for just these parts. And now we have symmetry temporarily, and that allows us to do this very quickly. And this is more like what I wanna do. Uh, once I have this ready, I can center the pivot back to the normal pivot, turn off symmetry, and turn everything off just to make sure, uh, turn everything on just to make sure that this is sitting in place, right? And I'm gonna hold control, mask these areas, bring in the gizmo. Ah, before I do that, actually, Oh no, let's just leave it like that. It's gonna be easier. So we have those dots in here, or these smaller areas. Uh, now what I can do is center the pivot again, hold control and just drag it in here, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. This is still in the center, so you could potentially just do mirror and well, but you know, just faster this way. All right, so now that I have this, uh, let's go out of ghost. I'm gonna take these ones and merge them together because it's gonna be the same thing. So merge down, or I also have a control E to merge down. Cool, so this is looking good. Now we can concentrate on the speaker. So let's select this. Um, I'm gonna turn off, or not turn on, turn this into a subtraction mesh, turn live booleans on. And you'll see we have this faceted polygon, so we're gonna have to turn this into um, sub uh, dynamic subdivision just to see it better. And to remove all these faceted polygons, all we have to do is go into solo mode and add a few loops in here. That would be it. So, oops, right click, insert, just create one here closer to the edge so that it bevels nicely. And then just a, a series of additional ones in the middle. That is it. Uh, cool, so let's get our solo, check live booleans with dynamic subdivision on. All right, pretty decent. Uh, we can probably increase the subdivision one more just to make it very smooth, but that is looking good. All right, so let's get out of um, live booleans. And just to create this, the speaker or the center part, I'm gonna use a part of this um, cylinder because it's right in the center what I wanted. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. So I'm gonna maybe, let's see. Let's see what would be a good option in here. I'm going to hold Alt and tag all of these polygons and including these ones as well. All right, right click on this Q mesh and I'm sure you know. Uh, I'm sure you know this, but if you click and drag, you extrude. If you hold Shift, you move while you do the same action with the Q mesh. But if you hold Control, you extrude that, right? So now we are just extracting this from this area, which is what I want. And we can hold Control and Shift to select this area, and we go to Split Hidden. So now we have uh, this single polygroup. Oh, this single plane really or cylinder in a separate subtool and we can go ahead and right click on this edge and I'm gonna close, um, not close, delete it. So I'm gonna delete a couple of those just to simplify this a bit. 
All right, so this is going to be the base of the speaker. Let's go ahead and right click on this, QMesh, Polygroup All, and extrude that. So this is the thickness of the speaker. Let's make it thick enough so that it embeds into the into this area or into the area of the side and then right click here bevel it's going to bevel this a little bit just to follow a bit more of the the reference here yeah, something like that just do a couple more here and one here at the back just to make sure we have some some proper smoothing as well and we can also insert one here like so all right so the trick for this speaker would be in how we subdivide these polygroups because uh, let's go ahead and hold control w and that's going to be a single polygroup um, because then i'm going to use the size of these the size of the of the quads to insert a specific pieces and use nano mesh to extrude it or to to use nano mesh to delete those areas um, I'm just thinking about about it and see what would be the best way but I think yeah I can I think I can show you that and it might work all right so how are we with time I think this is gonna be the last piece that I'm that I can create today um, before because obviously I want to show you a bit of the Siri measure so let's do it really quickly. Again, really, really quickly again. Right click, insert. So I'm going to select multi edge loops and I'm gonna click on here. Hang on. Yep. Click and drag. And this dragging is the one that helps me determine the size. Um, I think that's going to be all right. Hmm. Maybe one more. Hmm. Let's leave it like that. I think that might work. Okay. Um, then I'm going to hold Control and Shift to isolate that, invert, Control W to assign a single polygroup. Um, and then what I can do is right click on this mesh or in this uh, polygroup and I'm going to select as my action polygroup the target is going to be polygroup also that it takes into account the entire color or this polar polygon ID of the blue one and then I'm going to select checker and then it's going to give me this checker pattern which is great um, so I can maybe view so you can see it a bit better no, just leave it like that you can see the I was gonna change the polygroup, but um, we're gonna move faster. Um, cool. So now we can go to a new cylinder 3D, and I'm gonna go to the initialize palette or tab or sub palette initialize sub palette, and I'm gonna reduce this a, a, a fair bit. So I don't need that many subdivision. Let's set it to 16. And the V divide or vertical divide, we're gonna set it to maybe maybe eight should be fine. And the scale, let's set it as something like that. Cool. So this is gonna be the hole or the little holes for the speaker. Let's turn this into a polymesh 3D. Rotate and looking at it from the top with perspective off. And I'm gonna create a new insert mesh. Create new. And I'm going to turn that insert mesh into a nano mesh. That's the reason why I. Uh, hang on, before I do that, actually, because this is going to be a Boolean operation, we probably want to smooth this out a bit. So let me just add insert, insert single one. So we can do something like that. So that when if we want to subdivide this like so, it is sharper in this area. All right, so Control W to assign a single polygroup. Let's do that again. Create new insert mesh, new, and I'm gonna turn this into a nano mesh brush. All right, so with that in mind, let's go back to our working tool. And I have a nano mesh here so that I can 
right click on any of these polygroups. So let's say, let's use the, the more pinkish one, right click. And right now this is an insert nano mesh. I'm gonna change the single poly as a target and I'm gonna change it to polygroup all. So now I can take, click anywhere of these. Oh, actually before I do that, there is like a, a something like a piece in the middle. So I might want to just tag these polygroup these polygons. And I'm gonna assign a single polygroup to this area. Oops. One polygon ID. Alright, that's better. So that wa that way when we insert the nano mesh, it's only gonna be done in this kind of like outer edge and we can and we don't have to worry about the center. So I'm gonna click and drag and you see we're creating this with nanomesh these these holes and that is great. I think that's looking great. Very easy. So that is really all we have to do. Now we can go to the nanomesh palette. Uh, this one doesn't have anything complicated so I don't I'm, I'm not even gonna bother with any of the settings here. Uh, if you wanted to, if you have, if you want to have something more, more control, you can change from prop to fit or to fill, and these two switches are gonna make sure that the nano mesh instance is going to be fitted or fill the entire size of, of the quad. But because these ones are uneven, let's say that. Um, let's see if I can just show you this really quickly as well. <laughs> so this is not a good color. So this square here is proportionally different than this square. If you use any of these things here, the the size of the of the little cylinder that we inserting is gonna change. So it's gonna be like that in here, but in this one it's gonna be tiny, right? So we don't want that. I want a consistent size for all the, the holes in this case. So that's why I'm gonna leave it as prop. Um, so I think it's fine as it is. Let's go to inventory here in the nano mesh sub palette, click one to mesh. And now we should have just a, just a mesh really, which is great. And because we have a different polygroup, I can hold control and shift to isolate it. And I'm gonna split, oh yeah, split hidden. I thought I, I thought I deleted it, but it's all good. So this is split hidden now, we can just push it down the bottom, like so. Get out of solo. Um, oh, we should have just placed this better beforehand, but it doesn't matter. Let's take the speaker, put it below this other cylinder. So this is the cylinder that we're using to subtract. So putting the, the speaker, the actual, this mesh uh, below the, the boolean is not gonna affect um, the speaker itself. Hopefully that makes sense. Whoops, that's not what I want. We can move them all together, like I show you, if I center this piece like so, turn on the pizza, pizza icon, and that way we have control of all these ones. So I'm gonna move this in place. Turn on, let's do a quick save, because I'm happy with how this is looking for now. Let's do a live boolean, just to see how this is working. We might have to push this in a little bit more. It's getting a bit slow with the live bullions. All right, I'm gonna push this speaker a bit more. So I want kind of like the the edge or the curvature, something like that. Maybe even scale it down a bit. All right. So let's um, let's see how this is looking with the bullions on. That's all right. Uh, hang on a second. The speaker itself shouldn't be a boolean. It should be a an addition. And the little this um, this series of cylinders, those are going to be bullions. So if I turn bullions now. Now it should work, brilliant. So let's go ahead and go into solo. I'm gonna take this this piece and I'm gonna scale this a bit more. 
and also I'm going to turn dynamic because I want a smoother a smoother point. It looks awful here in the front, but that's not going to be part of the boolean or anything, so it doesn't really matter. And let's go ahead and live boolean, get out of solo, let's go back to live boolean, and now we have the holes of the speaker. So we can take the speaker as well and turn on dynamic, so it's a little bit better. And this is maybe too close to the edge, so we can just take the entire the entire tool and just scale it down a bit. Great. So that is how I would approach this part. Um, maybe we need to just refit this because right now, um, let's go ahead and turn on transparent, select the speaker itself, and you know what? Um, let's do it one at a time. I want to scale this up just to match the size of the of the hole that we created a bit better, and then this one, I'm going to scale that up. There we go. And then we can push this in a bit more. All right, a few steps in here, but um, as you can see, that the, the process of creating these type of details using NanoMesh and Booleans is really easy. And this is going to be a, a good challenge for the Siri Mesh 3. We have about 20 minutes, so um, I'm going to try to do one of these pieces with Siri Mesh and see what uh, if we can. I mean, these are going to be very complex. <laughs> so we're going to try to do something something with the Siri Mesh 3. Right, so I think we are good. Transpose, enable live boolean. Oops, turn off, turn on this hole, and also dynamic live boolean. So now we have this nice, this nice piece uh, that we can continue working on. So let's do a quick save. Let's see if you guys have any questions so far. Really quickly. Really, really quickly, exactly. I don't know, sometimes I just, um, like a phrase or something, I just uh, wake up and I have a phrase stuck in my head and I just use it throughout the whole day a lot or a, or a word. <laughs> so really quickly is the word of today. So really quickly, let's go ahead and uh, let's do some theory measure three. I have my <laughs> have my microphone in the way <laughs> for, from my references. Um, so this is the one that we've been doing. This one is just a cylinder, and you can probably repeat the same process that I did here for these holes. So I'm not going to bother with that because I already showed you the the technique. Um, yeah. So I mean, these ones. Are, this is probably the most complex dial. We already did this one in the previous lesson, so you can or the previous live stream so you can check that out mm. I reckon we can take the main body and that is probably the most complicated shape to try to see measure what do you reckon um, or if you have any suggestion which one do you wanna which one do you like to to try let me just bring everything turn everything on let me know in the chat guys um, otherwise I'll do the the, the front one If you have a if you have a suggestion or which which one to re apologize just gonna turn off turn on perspective and show you how this is looking with the live booleans on. So starting to get a bit more complex. Which area do you reckon or do you want me to try to re apologize? Um, that would probably give you the best kind of. Um, the best view for the for the process of retopologizing hard surface with the Siri Mesh 3. I think I think the body would be the best one. So this area because it has the holes, it has sharp lines, it has these soft lines here as well or, or more curved lines. So uh, this one here as well. So this one overall I think is the most complex shape for the Siri Mesh. I mean, visually, it's not too complex, just a bunch of holes using booleans. But for the Siri measure, it is the most complex one to uh, to understand, I think, and to try to figure out the the continuity of the of the polyloops. So we can try that one, or maybe the the panel itself here. Yeah. This one. This is not too bad actually. Um, 
let me let me know guys if you want me to do any particular piece first because I'm not gonna have time to to show you the whole thing no suggestions cool all right I will do the one that I think is gonna be best no worries at all let's take the body then so the first thing I need to do for the body I'm just going to isolate it body so this is my body or my or like the main shape the bigger shape of this speaker before I do the boolean I need to make sure that all my pieces are all the boolean pieces are working and have the smooth the smoothness that I want. So this one, for example, can turn dynamic. Let's enable live booleans, and we have to fix these a few things here. So that's a good thing that I saw that first. Going to C modeler. I'm just gonna add a edge loop here. Oh, okay, so this is there's no continuity here, or there is, but this is these are quads and these are triangles. So let's just hold the Alt key and tag these ones. Right click insert entire region and we do kind of like what we did before uh, with the other cylinders just so that this area is sharper and we can subdivide it better so if I go to dynamic this is much better uh, we can add maybe another level of subdivision again because we're gonna do the serial mesh we can probably subdivide or use the dynamic subdivision on the Siri mesh version so that's actually not too bad let's, let's try that so I'm gonna take these other pieces turn off dynamic see if it is too obvious yeah let's turn off dynamic now for all of these and we, we try both I mean we have time but um, I think it should it should work which one these two have dynamic as well all right uh, one thing I'm gonna do though is turn off the little extra bar because that's just a an, an addition to the to the mesh but it's not subtracting anything so these are the ones that are gonna make the the body complex uh, there's a few parts here at the top that I didn't do which you know, um, maybe I can do them. I can do them really quickly, <laughs> really, really quickly again. <laughs> um, just because once I do the boolean, it's just gonna be faster to have everything with the same object. So let's let's do that. I'm gonna insert a. We can insert this cylinder. Put it in here. Select that. Rotate the gizmo 3D 90 degrees. So this is kind of like a ventilation system, I guess, that is set up here at the at the back. It's not right in the center, it's just next to the antenna. So I'm gonna put it here. Push that in, like so. And I'm gonna set it as a subtraction mesh, turn on live booleans. So this is the type of thing, maybe just to scale it up a bit. Closer to the back something like that um, and I'm happy with the I mean I'm not gonna turn on dynamic for this one because that again is hopefully part of what we can do after we we create the the Siri mesh uh, the only thing that I want maybe this is not as just make it higher it's not as deep now that I look at the reference I'm gonna duplicate this right and I'm gonna scale it down Turn off perspective just so that we can see it better. Scale it like so, so it's just thinner. And also set it as a subtraction mesh. So I'm going to scale it down the whole thing and push it down. All right, something like that. And this is kind of like the ventilation thing. I mean, we could use. A square actually so let's just turn that into a Q cube 
anything that you have selected can be turned into a Q cube. Right, so we can scale this down, position that in place, and scale it in the x axis. So there's going to be a bit of depth here. Whoops. Turn on polyframe so that we can see what we're doing. Just going to push this in a bit. There we go. Let's move this one in place. And now we can hold control, click and drag to establish the or determine the the distance between the holes and then let go of the control and duplicate. Cool. Remove the mask. Let's reposition this a bit better. Maybe scale it up a bit. All right, so this now is going to give us a very complex shape, very complex shape for the entire um, the entire body. The bullions. All right, so these are the objects that are going to be subtracted. Great, let's do a quick save. Get a sip of water here. So can you retopologize with dynamics of division or you have to divide the pieces? Um, you can retopologize, no, sorry. What do you mean <laughs> retopologize with dynamics of division? Because dynamic subdivision is just a preview of the subdivision. So if you're going to retopologize with dynamic subdivision, you'll have to do it manually using the C-spheres, I guess. Um, if you want to retopologize the dynamic subdivision using the c remesher, you'll have to just apply the dynamic subdivision. I don't know if that's what you meant. Um, I can create the live booleans with, sub, sub, with dynamic subdivision if you, if you want. That is just... Um, that's the next step that I'm going to do, but I just want to create it without the dynamic subdivision first because I think that's going to be easier and then we can, if we get a good topology out of the Zero Mesher 3, the automatic retopology, we can achieve the smoothness that I want um, by doing that after. So there's no need to, to do it twice. All right, so with that, with that in mind, let's, um, let's go ahead and if you click on this, on the on the folder, if you click on the cog icon here, right, you have the options for that folder. So you have boolean folder, and that is going to create uh, the process of boolean from all the pieces into a single boolean object. And this boolean with sub with s s oh, d s divide that is with the subdivision approach. So if you want to use dynamic subdivision in any of the pieces and produce a boolean that takes into account the the objects that have subdivision. Uh, is, the objects that have dynamic subdivision, you can just click on this one. That's the difference between these two. Because I turned them off for all of the pieces, I'm going to use the um, folder, the Boolean folder. I can use this one, but because I don't have any subdivision, there's no point. So let's click on that and wait for Seabrush to do that process. Well, that's it. <laughs> we don't have to wait for anything. Brilliant. So this is a great thing. I mean, hang on a second. There is something wrong. Oh, no, there is not. It's just that this one is the, the currently selected tool, so I just need to select that one. There we go. So this is a great thing, a, a great process, because the folder with all the originals is still there. So I can turn this on, and you'll see I have all my originals, so I can turn dynamic subdivision for everything and try again with a different process, or with the dynamic subdivision enabled process. But we got this this piece that's, that as a... It's good. It's, it's looking good. I like it. But if we turn on Polyframe, boom. Here is where we have the the topology issues. Now, it's not too bad. Let's be honest. This is not too bad. This is something that um, you know we can work with. However, because we have all this triangulation here, if I were to just use either dynamic subdivision or subdivide this model, obviously we're going to get some spikes and some things that make it look a little bit weird, right? Especially here. <laughs> this is not great. And that is where, um, this is why we need to do the retopology. If you're just going to make a, a render, or you can use, let's say, if you want to use KeyShot, let's just undo all that. 
if you want to use Keyshot, which is how I've been working on on this type of, of scenes before Siri Mesh 3 was introduced, uh, just because I couldn't be bothered doing the retopology of all these little pieces, um, you can send this to Keyshot and then just render it as it is. But now that we have Siri Mesh, we can play around with some settings. So again, uh, just to to at least to be consistent with what I've been saying today, let's do this really quickly. Um, and we're gonna go into the Siri Mesh. So let's go to Siri Mesh, Siri Mesh here. Uh, but before we run the Siri Mesh process, I need to make sure that I prepare the object for the Siri Mesh. So if I turn on Polyframe, you'll see that we have a few different poly groups. So let's just do one as it is to show you the the results. So I'm gonna do Siri Mesh with without tweaking any of the options. So it's not gonna be great. It's not gonna be an ideal um, an ideal mesh. Let's just wait for it. And while we wait, let me know if you guys have something. Oh, there we go. So it is not the greatest topology. You know, it's very wonky. I mean, it is good for an automated tool, right? But that's, you know, that's not what we want. This is very, as a sketch, if you want, it's uh, it's all right. It just took into account all these loops. Um, so that that is good, but it's not ideal, right? So we need to prepare Siri Mesh so that we can use these these switches like keep groups and smooth edges and detect edges, which is the real deal of Siri Mesh 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way that we prepare it is by assigning polygroups to the areas that we want to keep as like hard edges. So the first thing that we can do that is that it should be pretty straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and select this polygroup. So hold. Um, Hang on a second, let's select the move brush. I'm gonna hold control, control and shift to isolate this one. Turn double as well so I can see both sides. And let's go to the poly polygroup palette and click in let's go and click on group by normals. So group by normals is gonna look at the normals of the polygons and the and the and the difference, I explained this in the in the previous uh, session, so you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, but now we have a series of polygroups in these flat planes, and that is what we want. Um, having different polygroups doesn't really affect anything, um, so we can just leave them as different polygroups, or if we want, you can, we can just Let's just leave it as it is. It doesn't really matter. I was just going to make a single polygroup, but it doesn't matter. Um, let's go ahead and do the same thing for this one. So this one, we want to keep we want to keep the borders, this border edge around here sharp. So let's click on group by normals, and that is going to allow us to keep these two separate. All right, so that is the idea. Again, this is just the theory. Hopefully it works. It should. I mean, it's not too complicated. It's a complicated, complicated piece. It's not a, a complicated concept. Uh, let's go ahead and hide these ones. All right. Um, let's hide these ones as well. We don't need these polygroups. Mm, there's some. There's some points here that are connected, but it uh, doesn't matter. Let's just do group by normals again. That is fine. The The only thing with this one is that I want a consistent polygroup around around this area. If I leave this polygroup as it is, um, Siri Mesh is going to try to create a sharp edge here, or it's going to try to recognize this as a, as a sharp edge. Um, so I want to keep this as a single polygroup, and hopefully, just hopefully, we can do um, a smoother area or a, a smoother c corner in this. So I'm gonna try to hide what I, whatever I don't need. Oof, there is a, it's a weird polygon floating here. You have to be careful with that because that is gonna throw off polyframe, uh, sorry, Siri Mesh. So I don't know what that is, but I don't want it there. All right, so let's hide these ones as well. Control W. 
Uh, the rest can stay as it is. I mean, this one as well could could be a bit better. All right, so these borders, that's all I'm doing, just um, selecting polyframe, poly, polygroups, sorry. All right, now we can just take this, let's leave this one as, a, as it is. I mean, it's just a polygroup connecting these two, but it's not too bad. Um, we can have some sharp edges in here and that help us create a loop around this area. All right, the rest, I think they can stay as they are. Um, this one's, let's hide everything by, hang on. Uh, making a mess of the selection. Uh, let's do it again. So control and shift, select this, control and shift, click and drag to invert, control and shift, Control shift click and there we go. Uh, there's some polygroups there. Just making sure that I'm grabbing the, the right ones. I'm gonna hide these ones here. I'm gonna hide this one here and just leave this one just so that oh, it is connecting. Uh, this is just a tedious process, but it needs to happen. So let's do group by normals and let's leave it as it is. This one as well. Just hide whatever we don't need. Oops. These are sharing the same polygroups, so we'll have to just deal with them separately. All right, inverse selection. Let's do another group by normals. Uh, this one is gonna be a bit complex, but not too bad. And I think I'm over the time now, but let's do it. Let's just finish this up. I'm gonna hide this. Oops, keep only, ah, uh, come on. Keep only this, this piece. And let's go ahead and do polygroup by normals again. That is much better. There we go. And the same thing for this one. I think I only need to keep this part. Do a single polygroup. And I think we are good to go. Uh, the rest of the polygroups are fine. This area, we can probably, oh no, it has different polygroups. Perfect. Uh, I might want to keep these as separate polygroups as well. So let's do polygroup by normal here as well, so that we have this edge border. All right. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to do a quick save, although zero measure you can just use undo, but I don't know how we're going to go with this. All right, so now under the Siri mesh, um, the settings that I need to keep or to enable are the keep groups. And keep groups are gonna make sure that, or Siri is gonna try to maintain all these groups and therefore try to create loops around the division or the, the transition between the different polygons ID or polygroups. Um, the smooth groups is set to zero. In this case, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem, but let's just put it at zero. Uh, this is something that if you were working on something that has, um, let's say, a DynaMesh object, I think I also explained this in the previous session, but if you have a DynaMesh object, it's going to create like a bit of a wonky area between polygroups. So the smooth groups is just a process that happens before the remesh um, takes over uh, and just like cleans that edge. But we have pretty clean edges, pretty sharp um, and straight lines. So smooth groups at zero should give us a good result. We can also enable the tech edges, hard edges. I'm gonna leave adapt so that the, the sizes of the polygon adapt depending on the different areas or different areas. With adapt on, series is gonna try to make probably more geometry around these areas that, that are needed to, to describe this shape. And this, which is 
kind of like a flat area, probably less. But with those settings on, let's just go for the, let's go for, for it. Just go zero mesh out. And here we go. Not too bad, but there's there are a few a few things that need to be worked on. So first of all, this area looks awful. And that is because again we have we have a rather complex shape. So we could have just done this afterwards to be honest, but I wanted to push the limits. So this is where once you do the the zero mesh and if things doesn't look the way that you expect it then you can go back and tweak things. But I think this one is something that is just going to make it really hard uh, for Siri Mesha. So we can just done this later on. Um, these ones shouldn't be a problem. Some of these look all right. These ones need more work on. Uh, but I think this is the main problem. This is the one that is creating the loops around here. Uh, so I'm just going to undo that, leave it as it is. And I'm going to go to the folder. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm gonna turn off as well these last uh, bits. All right, and I'm gonna click on the cog icon, boolean folder, and now we have another version. Right, this is another version without the the back bit. We can do that maybe afterwards once we have this uh, clean clean mesh. So now with this one that is slightly simpler, let's just do a quick group by normals. Just to wrap up today's live stream, uh, polygroups, polygroup by normals, and let's let's hope for the best here. Not hope for the best. We we're doing everything that is needed, but you know it's an automated tool. Groups at zero. Keep uh, keep groups. Detect edges, and let's run the series mesh. All right, much better. So you see now we have a, a nicer set of loops. Still could could be improved, but it, like I said, it's a, it's a rather complex shape. So what we can do is undo that. I'm going to increase the polygon count to 10. Remove the tech edges because we also have the polygroups anyway. So zero mesh that. And it's looking a little bit better. So you see, maybe this one is the, the, least, the least impressive one. But the rest of them are, are quite good. Again, we can we can keep tweaking the settings, play with the uh, with these settings. But for a complex shape, we have holes, we have loops, we have you know sharp edges. This is a pretty decent result. Uh, if I turn dynamics of division, you'll see it is a pretty decent result. I mean, we can tweak these these edges here manually, like here. So that is something that we can do with the with the series measure or just sharpening the lines in here but for the most part this is a pretty decent result for just a quick siri mesh and we can just increase the q grid here for example and play with the with the coverage maybe the coverage is not the best one turn off constant i think i think just subdividing it would be good right um, and this is pretty decent to do a, a quick UVs and you know send to Substance Painter or or doing it somewhere else. Um, but the whole point of what I wanted to showcase with this stream is that you have uh, you have all the tools you need to create this type of thing. Again, this is probably the, one of the most complex shapes, so we we'll, we might have to go back and tweak it a bit. But I think it looks it looks pretty decent so far. Let's turn off dynamic. There's certain things like in this area that definitely can be improved. I mean, the loops in this area are not great. Uh, but just before we go, again, I'm 10 minutes over time. So I'm going to do something else just to show you something, another another tool that you can have to control the zero measure. So I'm going to undo that. Undo the zero measure. Turn off polyframe and you can enable polypane. So you can increase the color density. Oh, hang on a second. See, yeah, RGB. All right. 
So with the standard brush, you can enable poly paint. So I'm just gonna add twice as much color, uh, much density in this area. So I'm just gonna try to paint maybe without lazy mouse. So I'm just gonna add more density in these areas that need kind of like a loop. So ideally, I mean, this is super rough, but ideally zero mesh is gonna try to give me more polygons in these areas. This might not be great, but you know, it's, it's good to give it a, a go. There we go. So I think it looks a little bit better. There are certain things like here, which are not great, but those ones are easy to change manually. So now we have a little bit more resolution here. These ones are looking great. Um, these ones as well. So we can go ahead and do something like in this area with the C modeler, for example, to just fix that area. We can hold Control and Shift to isolate these polygroups that are problematic. Invert the selection, see, you have very different looping. So I'm gonna invert that, I'm gonna delete hidden, right? Uh, by the way, I have two tools enabled. What am I seeing to? Oh, I split them, so I just need to delete them. Okay. And now that we have this here, with these poly loops or these edge loops, uh, it, they're totally fine. We can just go ahead and bring in the C modeler, right click an edge or press the spacebar over any edge. And I'm gonna click on close, convex hole, and I'm gonna right click or click, hang on a second, click, do this type of thing and then just repeat the action in all the edges. Just one click and Sirius will remember the settings. So once you have the first pass of the Siri measure, oh, uh, there we go. Once we have the, the first pass of the Siri measure, then cleaning up these things with the C modeler is extremely easy. So this is much better. We can do the same thing here. Delete hidden, and then use the, I mean, you, you can also tweak this, <laughs> but just for the sake of demonstration purposes, this looks fine, and now we can do a much better dynamic subdivision. There, we need to fix, ah, this something's happened, just, it's, just a, it's an easy fix. Let's go to geometry, and let's go to mesh integrity. I'm gonna check mesh integrity, there are two uh, this mesh contains two edges that are shared by two or more than two polygons, so we can just fix that. Dynamic, there we go. So this is the problem here. We can just get rid of that um, that area and just do it again. But you'll see this, this is a cleaner looking mesh. All right, so um, let's leave it there, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to just work on this later on, um, on, on my own and just show you the final result, but the processes that I show you between this this live stream and the previous one should give you, um, you know, a good understanding of the of the workflows and the and the techniques that I would use to create something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and turn everything on so you can see what we did today. Uh, turn live boolean's on, and so this is what we have. And if you have any last minute question, all good. Great. No worries, guys. So uh, I will see you um, probably next week. Um, next week, I'm not going to be here. So we're going to have to stop the streams for about three weeks. Uh, I'll be back at the end of April. And we will. I will start back again at the end of April. And we can do some other stuff. Uh, maybe get a little bit into other of the a different set of tools that you guys have been asking for, like polypane, maybe um, fiber mesh and all those sort of things. So hopefully you find this or you found this interesting. If you have any questions, uh, like I said, uh, you can just drop me a line anywhere on the Silver Guides or, or in social media, and I'm happy to, uh, to answer them if I know. Um, also, if you have any suggestions as well or, or want to share some insights about something else, I'm also happy to always be in the, I'm always in the look for new techniques and new suggestions. So I'll see you guys uh, in a few weeks, not next week, in a few weeks. Uh, take it easy and happy sea rushing. Cheers.